Taxi! Olympia, please. Who's on? It's me. I'm on. Who are you? <laughs> uh, Ardlo Hanlon. Who? Look, I'm a stand-up comedian, highly respected in the field. Dave have asked... Dave who? Would D Dave, the TV people, have asked me, Ardlo Hanlon, to return to Dublin in triumph to do a one-night stand with my special guests Gary Delaney and Josie Long. Gary Delaney and Josie Long? Yeah. I love them. Hop in. Carrick McCross, County Monaghan. Dave's one night stand have asked me to come here to show you my hometown. Anyway. Actually, the real reason I came here today is to visit my father and tell him I love him to his face. Because I do. And I think I should say the words out loud before it's too late. There's the house now. Ah, Frank! <laughs> Frank Jesus! Pity about Frank. We've had him for 17 years. Okay. God, I'm nervous. Mammy! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <sighs> Hello, Daddy. <clears throat> Sorry about Frank. <laughs> Daddy, there's something I've been meaning to say. I love... I love... It's okay. I'm only playing. I'm sorry. Ardo. Ardo. Daddy. Daddy? Daddy, I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Olympia Theatre in Dublin, please put your hands together for Mr. Ardell O'Hanlon. Come on now. That's just taking the piss. That's that's way over the top. No need for that at all. Thank you for that. Marvellous. People wonder why we do this. It's exactly for that type of encouragement. We're needy people. Could I just hear it one more time, please? It was that it was that good. Marvellous. Lovely. Even better. Even better that time. Brilliant. This is all I do, just ask you to cheer more. Uh, <laughs> so it's marvellous to be back in Dublin, ladies and gentlemen. I know things are grim here, but we're not going to be defeated. We're a resilient people. We're used to it. Yeah. Due to the very harsh economic conditions, I've had to cut back on the number of jokes in my show tonight. I, 
apologise in advance. I've had to let all the joke writers go and outsource the whole operation to India. So, uh, it's a pity. Most of my current material is about arranged marriages and uh, <laughs> the perils of bathing in the Ganges. So, not much good to me here in Dublin. <laughs> but I'm a big hit in Mumbai, so that's something. <laughs> Sanjeev actually wrote that bit. <laughs> Anyone here from India? And that bit. <laughs> it's a flawed policy, I know that. <laughs> so it's great to see so many people here. We all have to tighten our belts. I went out to a restaurant the other night with my wife. I have a wife, hooray. <laughs> Wives are great. And um, <laughs> we went out to a restaurant for an argument and we were there for a little while. <laughs> Some of you have wives, you know what I'm talking about. It was the anniversary of our first argument. We were there for a while and she had a starter and I didn't bother myself. And then we went home. And on the way out, I took a huge handful of mints and an extra coat. So it was a great night altogether, fantastic. You gotta do what you gotta do. One thing I don't like though, I find it humiliating we're lumped in with the other failed economies of Europe, Portugal, Italy, Greece and Spain. Known collectively, <laughs> it's great, known collectively by the acronym PIGS, which is kind of humiliating, isn't it? As opposed to the emerging economies of the world, Brazil, Russia, India, China. They're called by the acronym BRIC, far more solid and respectable. And as for Canada, Uruguay, Nigeria, Tanzania, and Switzerland. <laughs> they're not helping the situation in any way whatsoever. <laughs> but we gotta be positive, don't we? You seem like fairly positive people, are you? Yeah. Well, about five of you are. Uh, that's, a, that's a start. My father, he, he offered me great advice. He said, the best way to be positive is to live every day as if it's your last day on earth. Good advice. So what I do is I spend all day in bed with an oxygen mask and some rosary beads. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy being positive, is it? What good can come of any day that begins by getting out of bed? That's a serious question. We all have to get up. Most of us here had to get up today. I, I've got up loads of times in my life. It, it doesn't get any easier, does it? In fact, it gets harder, if anything. In America, people leap out of bed. That's what they do. Because they're upbeat people by nature. Rain, hail, or shine, they leap out of bed. We can't do that here. It's too dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> and you could cut your toe on your broken dreams. <laughs> A little bit of poetry slipped in there, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, I'll have jokes about wanking later on, but for now, poetry. <laughs> I cater for all tastes. <laughs> what a stressful time we've had over the last few years. Now, very difficult being a Catholic, isn't it? You know, with all the scandals and cover-ups. I think the Pope should resign. I honestly, I'm sure most people agree with that at this stage. He should have resigned when he had the chance. All the cardinals should have resigned as well. And I think God himself should seriously consider his position at this stage. <laughs> I mean, he must have known what was going on. <laughs> he should quit and be replaced by one of the Hindu fellas with all the arms and the legs. <laughs> Sanjeev assured me that would get a bit of a titter. <laughs> Worst thing is, you can't have any association with the church now, can you? You can't even admit to being a fictional priest anymore. That's what I find personally. <laughs> personally. Uh, 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 I'll stop that. No need for that. Mm. No. No need for that. And I don't say this lightly, coming from a Catholic background myself, but I think the Pope is a big fat liar. You just know right well when he's apologizing for yet another misdemeanor, you just know he's hiding yet another priest under his cassock. You just know that. <laughs> I apologize. Shh, I am so sorry. Even the word cassock, it's an anagram of ass and cock. I mean, that's how, de <laughs> that's how depraved they are. And anagrams never lie. People say priests should be allowed to get married. Maybe that's the answer. Do you really think so? Priests should be allowed to get married, not unless they reduce the age of consent to seven. I don't see how that would work. <laughs> okay, I hear you. I'll take it. Take that. Big step back there. It's all right for you. You just have to listen to it. I have to say it. <laughs> Suffer the consequences. The, big, the problem, as I see it, is not just the church's credibility that's in question, it's God's credibility. You know, when we were kids, we, were always, we always thought God was brilliant. We were told he created the world in six days. Wow, fair play. 
But now in hindsight, it just seems a little bit hasty. <laughs> and what was the big rush, behaving like a dodgy property developer and... <laughs> Maybe if he took a little bit more time, he could have done something about nettles. <laughs> or the French. You know, there's a snag list. But despite everything that's happened to us, you won't believe this, but according to the latest international survey, this is absolutely true, we're the happiest people in the world. I wouldn't celebrate that, that's mental. After all we've been through, I wasn't consulted on this survey. And I've no doubt if there was a survey on the biggest liars in the world, we'd win that hands down as well. I think the problem with international surveyors is they just don't understand our tone. <laughs> Excuse me, are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking delirious. <laughs> delirious, I love it. Oh, they just stumble upon a bunch of gormless Egypts. Are you happy? I am, yeah, I'm very happy altogether. Yeah. Sure, why wouldn't I be? Sure, look at me, I'm not bleeding or anything. Of course I'm happy. <laughs> I had sausages for me breakfast this morning, they were lovely. Seven sausages, all of them lovely. And you look at me, I can nearly whistle now and everything. <laughs> Join me back here in a couple of minutes when I'll be joined by the fabulous Gary Delaney. This next man, person I'm about to introduce to you now, ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the comedians I resent most in the world. <laughs> I mean that in a good way, obviously. Uh, you will see what I mean. He is the lord of the one-liner, ladies and gentlemen. He is the Quipmaster General. Please give a massive Dublin welcome to the wonderful Gary Delaney. <laughs> Hello, Dublin. Well, it's good to be back. Last time I was here, a girl asked me for sex. I had to disappoint her. We had sex. <laughs> Can I just say how slightly disappointing for my ego it is that a lady over there started pissing herself at the idea that somebody might have asked me for sex. That's, <laughs> that's really not supposed to be the funny bit in that joke, but, you know, nice to see you again, madam. <laughs> I'd recognise that laugh anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Only tonight is slightly less hurtful. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm trying to learn to be a more sensitive lover. I got a DVD, How to Improve Your Foreplay Technique. It was really good. Had to fast forward through the boring bit at the beginning, obviously. <laughs> you know. Now, why are they bothered with that? <laughs> Still a bit shaken up. I was involved in quite a violent mugging the other day. Yeah, but on the plus side, I did make a few quid. <laughs> That's right, swings and roundabouts. That's where it happened. <laughs> Last night I had to get towed home because Ratty and Molly were too pissed. <laughs> Wind in the willows joke there. <laughs> Pretty cutting edge. <laughs> Pretty down with the kids. Brap, brap, brap. Or whatever it is. But I like to think I've still got it. I took four E's last night. That was a tough hand at Scrabble. <laughs> Yuri Geller, surprisingly hard to stab. I like an audience who understand the Yuri Geller joke, thank you. <laughs> I went on a positive thinking course, it was shit. <laughs> Malcolm X chose that name rather than admit he'd accidentally put a kiss at the end of a text message. <laughs> I 
I went to see Walt Disney on ice. Bit disappointing, it's just an old bloke in a freezer. <laughs> so much more. <laughs> President of France said this week that English speakers were arrogant in their refusal to learn foreign languages. At least I think that's what he said. <laughs> but it all just sounded like ha he ha he ha he ha <laughs> I watched the director's cut of a porn film. At the end, he actually fixes the washing machine. <laughs> A very porn literate crowd tonight, I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> Old lady names are very much back in fashion at the moment, like Lily or Elsie or Rose, and we wanted something like that for our daughter, but we couldn't decide, so in the end we just called her Nan. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon she'll grow into it. I stopped in a lay-by, there was a sign saying no dumping. That was right, I was just having a piss. It didn't... <laughs> it didn't seem to affect me. <laughs> My next-door neighbour's really loud and obnoxious, so now I know how Canada feels. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, let's gloss over the irony of an Englishman doing that joke in Ireland, shall we? <laughs> That would be too much, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I went to WH Smith's and I got a book of a thousand raffle tickets for £2.50, which is a bargain because normally they're a pound a strip. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't win. <laughs> but the recession's been affecting everybody. My brother's tightening his belt a lot at the moment, but then he is a heroin addict. <laughs> So we can do the dodgy ones tonight as well, can we? That's good. <laughs> I bought a chocolate bar on the inside of the wrapper. It said, you're a loser. <laughs> you're ahead of me. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded if there'd been some sort of competition on. <laughs> to make things worse, it was a boost. <laughs> Nan would always send us texts saying, please come around, my arthritis is getting worse. But eventually they stopped. <laughs> so presumably it got better. <laughs> She's a very traditional woman. She'd only let Grandad have sex for a hole in the sheet. He said he didn't mind too much, but it did get confusing at Halloween. <laughs> Trick or treat, mister, am I I? Thanks to the efforts of men like my granddad that we don't speak German today, because he single-handedly killed 11 language teachers. <laughs> Thanks, granddad. Red sky at night, light of shorter wavelengths is being dissipated by water vapour and atmospheric dust. <laughs> Red sky in the morning, same. <laughs> Not as catchy as the original, but a lot more accurate. <laughs> I'm sitting at home, this guy knocks on my door. Have you ever considered an alternative energy supplier? I'm like, no, I'm quite happy with food. <laughs> I like to annoy my Israeli flatmate by giving him any post that's just addressed to the occupier. <laughs> penis extension. Now his house looks really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Missing persons register or list of hide and seek champions. <laughs> this morning I went to a meeting of my premature ejaculator support group, but it turns out it's tomorrow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of the guys started clapping before the end of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did suffer from premature ejaculation, which made me feel selfish and bad for my girlfriend. Then she suggested I try this special cream that reduces your sensitivity. And it really worked, because now I don't give a fuck about her. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Been attending Gamblers Anonymous for three years, whereas my best mate Dave, he only stuck it out for two and a half. So I won that one. <laughs> Dave drowned. So at his funeral, we got him a wreath in the shape of a life belt. Well, it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Put an advent calendar for Jehovah's Witnesses behind every door, somebody tells you to fuck off. <laughs> I went to buy a Christmas tree. The guy said, Are you gonna put it up yourself? I said, No, I was thinking the living room. <laughs> a friend of mine keeps going on and on about how good his orthopedic shoe is, but I think he's built it up too much. So. <laughs> I don't like it when you're kissing a girl and you suddenly realise her eyes are open. It's like, shit, she's coming round. <laughs> I once had a one-night stand and I didn't get an erection. That isn't cool. Luckily, the woman I was with was really understanding. She just said, don't worry, that used to happen to me. sexual problems are hard for men to talk about. As I said, I suffered from premature ejaculation, but I was too shy, too embarrassed to do anything about it. Eventually screwed up the courage to go and see my doctor, showed her my penis, said, look, I'm worried I might be a bit premature. She said, you certainly are. I'm the receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> Dublin, it has been an absolute pleasure playing for you tonight, so thank you very much. I've been Gary Laney. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> More great comedy from Josie Long. Welcome back to Dave's One Night Stand with me, Ardlo Hanlon. <laughs> the best thing from my point of view about tonight is that I don't have to do the whole show. Isn't that brilliant? Hey! <laughs> Come here. Some of you are cheering a bit too enthusiastically there. <laughs> One of the most thrilling things about this job is that occasionally you stumble across extremely original comedians. That's all you're looking for, a bit of originality. Please welcome to the very special, very strange and beautiful world of Josie Long! <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Um, it's such a treat to be here. I've got a list for you now, and this list is the best things to write in the condensation that forms on the mirrors of hotel bathrooms. <laughs> okay. Okay. Number one, I will kill again. <laughs> End of list. <laughs> it's only better than that, because the cleaners are never going to see it. It's just going to be the people who are, like, having a dirty weekend, just like, mwah, see it. Oh, Jesus, no, oh, God, almighty. <laughs> Do I tell him? Is that worse? Is that better? I just don't know. <laughs> I'm a feminist, right? I'm definitely a feminist, and I wanted to talk about it, because that's not creepy for me to say that, right? I don't love to bang any less for having said it. <laughs> um, <laughs> realise it was a big issue until you say anything vaguely strident and people are like, who invited the frigid puritanical bitch? And, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really realise, I was talking to my sister about my ex-boyfriend um, and his surname is Branch and she said to me, so when you get married, your name will be Mrs. Josie Branch. And I said, no, if I were to ever get married, my name would be Ms. Josie Long. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, will you be becoming a lesbian? <laughs> I thought, we've not quite won the war, if that's your attitude to my choices. And I wouldn't really mind, but sexism is so relentless and pervasive. Like, last summer, I decided to stop going on diets, right? It's been awesome, right? It's so good. Like, I know, like, I'm a bit... But uh, basically, I now am so happy. I look at women who are slimmer and better looking than me, but on diets, with a kind of smug condescension. It's like, oh. <laughs> You're not happy with yourself. <laughs> you not eat 
I'm behind. <laughs> yeah, I carry a few pounds, but I like to think I work it. <laughs> Thank you. So I was like in a really great place about my body for the first time ever. And then Special K began their annual, oh, you know Special K, it's like the cornflake like cereal <laughs> for girls. You know it, right? And they began their annual advertising campaign that goes, women, see if you can get slimmer this summer. Like, not would you like to lose weight, not do you need to, no, just sing. And I was like, oh, guys, actually, um, I think I'm all right. I think I'll just stay the same. Like, just sing. <laughs> Please don't make me go on a diet. I've been on, I don't want to go. You will sing. Please don't. don't just, just sing. Please don't. <laughs> They're so dry. <laughs> it's not lunch, it's breakfast. <laughs> what time is it? Is it morning? It tastes like it's morning. <laughs> I hate, right? We have a newspaper in my country. You have newspapers, right? Joke, joke. Um, we have a newspaper in my country called The Sun, right? And I... Uh, no, thank you, sir. Booing. Good. You like this, buddy? Right. <laughs> they have a thing called page three. I fucking despise it, right? I, I think it's creepy and weird, right? I hate it. I hate The Sun. The only thing I hate more than The Sun is The Star, which basically goes, women are dogs, women are dogs, women are dogs, football! <laughs> um, but... And I hate page three of the sun, right? I can't bear it, right? But I do everything I can to avoid it. I don't buy it, I don't look at it. If it wasn't for Dear Deirdre, I would never read that paper. <laughs> She's so titillating. <laughs> and that's the thing, I do everything I can to avoid it, right? But I, when people... When you say you don't like page three, people defend it so violently. They're like, um, it's just a bit of fun. It's a national institution. It's only been around 30 years. Nobody says that about Peter Andre. <laughs> And I was on the tube one morning. Oh, the tube is like an underground space worm. <laughs> and I was sat on the tube, and there was a man next to me who was reading page three of the sun, right? And it was 10 in the morning, it was super crowded. I couldn't even get away, I couldn't look away, right? And 10 in the morning, that is too early for tits for a straight woman. I don't need them. <laughs> Just had my breakfast, don't, don't need them, right? And I thought, oh, that's a bit much. I'm going to ask him to cover it up. Right? I'm very good at being nice to people. I was like, excuse me, do you mind covering that up? I find it a bit much. And he looked at me and went, it's not my fault they put it in there. <laughs> and I thought, well, you are buying it and reading it. I just don't know how else you could show your disapproval in this matter. <laughs> and eventually, fair play to him, he covered it up. Right? And I was so proud and grateful because I thought, you know, at least he now knows it's a bit weird and maybe we could have a chat about it and change things in the future. And I went home and I went on Twitter you know, Twitter, young people like me, young, <laughs> young, 29, young, please, young still, please, casting directors, 23, please, please. And I went on Twitter and I tweeted about it and I wrote, feminist and proud, right? And oh my God, did I not get more abuse than I ever get from loads of people my own age being like, I just don't think it's cool to force your beliefs on another person, do you understand? So I'm actually a vegetarian, but I wouldn't rip a burger out of somebody's mouth, do you understand? <laughs> One person actually tweeted, I'm not offended by tits, but I am offended by paedophiles. Funny that. <laughs> As if secretly meant by saying a feminist thing was, tell you what, paedophiles have a rough old time of it, don't they? That's <laughs> feminist, we really love them. <laughs> this is, I thought I'd finish with a song. Thank you. Thank you. It's one of my own compositions. Okay. <laughs> one of them is into it, the other one is not. One of them enjoys it, the other longs for death. <laughs> one of them is happy, one of them just keeps going because he's a twin. <laughs> Jedward. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, Love it. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this. I hope you have as well. Thank you. Bye. Join us after the break for more from Arbel O'Hanlon.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I should tell you, I'm not always as suave and sophisticated as I am tonight. A couple of weeks ago, I was on a train, a very embarrassing incident. Uh, this lady got on the train and I offered her my uh, seat and she sat down and I started talking to her and she didn't like that. But I'd just given her my seat, so the least she could do is have a bit of a chat. <laughs> and I said to her, something I probably shouldn't have said. I said, uh, when are you due? <laughs> Some of you have been in that position. <laughs> she looked at me with horror and of course I realised my mistake. I realised she wasn't actually pregnant at all. She was just a little bit fat. <laughs> but quick as a flash, I covered my tracks. I said, uh, when are you due another snack? So, <laughs> Yes, I managed to dig myself out of that situation. <laughs> so if you ever find yourself in that position again, feel free to use my words. That's a little <laughs> gift to you. Yeah. Basically, the rule of thumb there is never, ever assume that a woman is pregnant until you actually see the baby's head emerging from the lungs. <laughs> <That's laughs> worth remembering. Uh, and I should have known better because I, my wife has been pregnant on a number of occasions. I, I have a, a real wife. She's a, she's a real woman. I, I, I'm not just saying that to impress you. She is real. I, I mean, I have imaginary wives as well, and they're great too in their own way. Uh, very obliging, I find. And, yeah, they wash each other and stuff, but that's not important. But she's been pregnant quite a few times, and I try to be a very sensitive partner, a good husband. You know, I even give up cigarettes and alcohol to show solidarity with her in her time of need. I even give up runny cheese, but it wasn't, it wasn't far enough because I refused to give up my hula hoop. I had just got a new hula hoop to keep trim. And I was becoming very good at it, the hula hoop. And of course, she insisted on having a go against all the advice. And of course, the hula hoop gets stuck. And I, <laughs> I make a silly joke. Oh, look, the equator. I shouldn't have said that. No. 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 We have to call the doctor um, to give me stitches in my eye. <laughs> She's just one of these people, she couldn't accept that there were things that she wasn't able to do. Like she couldn't tie her own laces, I had to do that. She couldn't run for the bus. You know, there were days we'd go shopping, I'd be home hours before her. You know what I'm saying? The thing my wife hated the most during the pregnancy was people touching her bump. Strangers in shops with ponytails would feel entitled to go up and touch the bump. What are they looking for? What were they expecting? A honking noise or something? <laughs> Or a can of coke to fall out with. <laughs> it's an invasion of privacy. It's like someone coming up to me, touching my balls. There you go, well done. <laughs> Fair play to you, the font of life. Good man yourself. <laughs> Let me get a bit of the, some of that gold dust there. <laughs> um, wouldn't mind if someone did that now. <laughs> Not now this minute, I'm busy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but then, the big day arrives. My wife goes into labor, and everyone tells you, this is the biggest day of your life. You're going to remember this forever. This is the big day. Yeah, seeing your wife helpless and in pain. There's a downside as well, but let's not dwell on the negatives. <laughs> All I can tell you is we were naive that first day. We went in, we brought Scrabble. That's how off the pace we were. <laughs> Thinking we'd have a game between contractions. I mean, <laughs> And we brought the video camera. Who films the birth? Like, who are you going to show it to? Yeah. Your parents, your friends? You know, filming the conception, I can see some merit in that. <laughs> Although my wife wouldn't go along with that idea. And so I didn't tell her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not an Egypt. I'm not a complete Egypt. But it is a very special time, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't want to put anyone off, people who haven't been there yet, but it's not all fluffy bunnies and marshmallows, ladies. There's a serious side to it. My wife's first labor lasted 27 hours. Mm. People ask me, what was that like? Have you seen the first 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan, have you? <laughs> that was a rom-com compared to this. <laughs> and it was partly my fault, because what happens, men, in the labor ward is we're patronized by the midwives. Aren't you a great fella? Good man yourself. <laughs> You're a vital member of the team. Fair play to you. You'll be a tremendous supporter, a good man yourself. You're pinching your cheek, good man, good boy. Hold her hand there, be with her every inch of the way. And you're nodding away thinking, right, it's more or less all down to me now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to the crunch, and she's roaring, push, push, 
in hindsight, I know she wasn't talking to me directly. <laughs> but at the time, I was a bit disorientated. <laughs> All I can hear is, push, push. I see a little head emerging. What are you going to do? I push it back in as gently as I can. <laughs> Set the whole thing back by about seven hours. <laughs> and I was warned about the, the foul language and the abuse to expect from my beloved partner during the high point of the evening. But I wasn't prepared for the ferocity of it. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that she was exploiting the situation to land a few big punches. All this, fuck, fuck, it's all your fault, you bastard. And I hate the engagement ring. Fuck! <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> but then you have the baby and all is forgiven and forgotten and you bring the baby home, and it is a special time. And you put the baby down uh, on something, usually, uh, on a table or something, and you're all looking at it. You're having a clue, having a clue what to do next. All your family and friends are around. There it is, there it is there now, look. <laughs> you're like workmen looking into a hole. <laughs> look, it's got legs and everything there, look, there, there, there. Well, I always vowed if I ever did have children, I would try and remember their names. I think that's just common courtesy. My father was one of these characters, he could never get my name right. You know, anytime he wanted to get my attention, it was always Frank, Sylvester, Sheila, Jim. Wouldn't have minded only I was an only child. <laughs> People should exercise more responsibility in the names they choose for their children. You know, it's not a, it's not a little game. It's not about you, it's about the child. We have a friend, they just had a child, they called it Poppy. What sort of a name is that? Poppy. We have another, another, other friends called Willow and Holly and Daisy. Now these are children, they're not, they're not plants or rabbits, you know what I mean? They're gonna grow up someday, they're gonna be big ladies. They're gonna want proper big lady girl names like Barbara or Julie. You know? <laughs> Maybe not Barbara, but you know what I mean. <laughs> You've never heard anyone saying, oh, do you hear Poppy's running for election? No. It's more like, do you hear Poppy's had another breakdown? <laughs> Terrible, poor Poppy. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter what names you give them. As any parent here knows, you never use their real name anyway, never. Now, I've no doubt that my children, they're gonna grow up absolutely convinced their names are for fuck's sake and Christ <laughs> almighty. <laughs> but they grow up too fast, that's the only problem. My daughter, she's 10, she casually announced the other day she doesn't believe in the tooth fairy anymore. I was devastated, I have to tell you. <laughs> Apparently she was rummaging around in a drawer and found some of her old teeth. <laughs> Beside my wand and my tutu. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to handle them, I don't know what to do. They're, they've been bugging me for years for a trampoline. Because all their friends have a trampoline. Every household in the country seems to have a trampoline. Because you know, the gardens are very small, so you've got to play upwards. You know? <laughs> I resisted for a long time because trampolines are dangerous and they're very hard to put up, but eventually I gave in. <laughs> Against my better judgment, I got them a trampoline. I spent days putting it up, looking at the manual, looking at graphic pictures of headless children and children impaled on branches. I was terrified. I was determined to only allow one child in the trampoline because that's the rules. But of course that policy is futile. Within moments you're overwhelmed. There's hundreds of children on the trampoline, <laughs> bouncing in all directions, up on the flat roof and into the bushes and into neighbors' gardens. <laughs> One poor child in a freak accident was bounced from trampoline to trampoline the whole way to feckin' Limerick. <laughs> Where she was finally rescued by the locals and then decapitated, but that's another story. <laughs> of course, the girls grow quicker than the boys, don't they? The girls mature gradually and gracefully. It's a beautiful sight. Boys tend to grow in spurts. <laughs> Usually accompanied by that noise, you'll find it. Yeah. What was that? Oh, that was just him growing again. Sometimes my son, he's the tallest boy in his class. Sometimes he's the smallest boy in his class. What's going on in the school? Sometimes he looks like my side of the family. Sometimes he looks like my wife's side of the family. Sometimes he looks like a feckin' otter. I don't know what to expect. There's been days I've collected the wrong child from school. You can get in a lot of trouble for that nowadays. Well, son, how is your... Who are you? Get out! Out! <laughs> Sometimes I turn to my wife and we think, my God, he's a handsome devil. Other days we think, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe we should keep him home from school today. What do you think? 
His head is bigger than his body. You know? he, could, he could fall over. And the voice changes all the time. It's baffling. Sometimes he sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks, little squeaky voice in him. Other days he sounds like the Prince of Darkness himself. I don't like ham. <laughs> ham, I don't like it. I hate ham. For the crack, we got him to leave a message on the answer phone. <laughs> There's nobody here at the moment. I've got them in a bag. <laughs> I had an awful dilemma there a few weeks back. I was asked to do Strictly Come Dancing. Do you know that show? The dancing and judging extravaganza. And I was, I was tempted. I was thinking about it for a minute or two, but then I said no. I mean, there was a part of me that loved the idea of doing the cha-cha-cha with an imp in a glittery tutu <laughs> and well-developed thighs and twirling her around on my head and reclining in wine bars after a rigorous rehearsal, you know, just looking at her, kind of. <laughs> the infatuation growing between us, you know, a flirtation forged in sweat and common purpose, bringing my marriage to the very brink of disintegration. I mean, that's obviously what I need in my life at the moment. <laughs> a crisis followed by a passionate reconciliation and a pledge to set aside Tuesday nights for a good chat. <laughs> we all need a good chat now and again. But I couldn't think about it because I'm not a dancer. I, I, I don't dance. I'm a dancer trapped in the body of a tree, frankly. <laughs> I, the main reason I couldn't think about it because I slipped a disc a few years ago in New Zealand. And I wish I could tell you it happened doing something very manly and Kiwi-ish. You know, like raping a horse or something. But no, it... <laughs> I didn't mean to inflict that image upon you. I don't even know if they do that in New Zealand. But that's beside the point. They could do if they wanted to. No, it happened in a, it happened in a swimming pool. I slipped my disc floating on my back in a pool. I mean, that's not supposed to happen to a normal person. And I was in great pain, but I'm not going to tell you about my pain. You've got your own pains. But let, it, let me tell you, I had to undergo an epidural. And I knew it was going to be bad. One man sat on my legs, another man sat on my head, and another man held my hand and sang Barbara Streisand songs. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be there. And, uh, and he was arrested. But uh, as a result, there are so many things I cannot do. And I'm at that age now where I want to be able to do stuff. A friend of mine recently suggested I should run a marathon. You know, he said it'd be great fun. Fun? It doesn't look like fun, does it? It looks like a type of punishment, doesn't it? I mean, when we were growing up, we were told, like, masturbation was self-abuse. What's running a marathon? <laughs> On the scale of self-abuse. At least with masturbation, you don't end up dehydrated, do you? Or blocking the city centre traffic for the day. Unless it's a spectacular wank. <laughs> We're made feel bad about ourselves, though. We're always, always told things like ants can carry 20 times their own weight. Why are we told that? Just so we feel bad about ourselves. Well, I've got news for ants. We've got trucks, so fuck you. <laughs> hmm? oh. yes. um, so there we go. So thank you very much for coming out tonight. I have to go now, by the way, and, um, and so do you, by the way. That's... <laughs> The management made that perfectly clear. <laughs> thanks to Gary, thanks to Josie, and most of all, thanks to you. You've been a fantastic audience. Good night. Dave's one night stand heads to Richmond next Thursday night at nine when Tim Vine heads home to deliver the one liners. Or you can catch up here next week. <laughs> <laughs>